there. And what happened to hall monitors? I mean, there are more practical ways to get these kids in their seats, and it takes an active, diligent administration, not tracking devices. I'd like to reiterate what, what Heather just said. You know, when I was in high school, we didn't have RF, RFID badges. We had hall monitors, Heather, you know, and um, I, think, I think what's really critical is this generation of children are growing up, number one, being in utero with cell phone mothers. None of us in this room had that experience. None of us in this room. What is the effect that's going to be? None of us in this room had to wear RFID badges. Okay? What are the effects of the... There, there's initial research that shows there's problems with concentration, problems with behavior, leukemia at these levels. Why are our kids going to be guinea pigs to prove the data is right? This is insanity. None of us in this room are kids this age. We, our kids this age are, are, are the guinea pigs of this society, and it's wrong. Okay, we now have a question. This actually, uh, this question just came to me from a Northside ISD employee in the building right now. Uh, he is a bus driver for Northside Independent School District and panel. He would like to know, will this problem affect bus drivers when students wearing these devices board the buses? I will start with um, that and coming this way, whoever's comfortable. Catherine. Sure, well, I think... Heather, Heather Fazio. Heather Fazio. Yeah, Catherine or Heather, whoever's comfortable. <laughs> Whoever wants to begin, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I think that I'll just let Catherine answer this because I think that you have a little more experience. Yeah, the... The technology is actually being used on Northside Independent School District buses now, from what I've been told. Uh, Katie Doyos can probably answer that. Katie, are they using it currently? Um, I believe that's, I need to research it again, but I, I believe that's part of where it actually started, because they, they targeted students with disabilities. They get more money, and so they have to ride the buses, so that's where it started. If I'm not mistaken, double check me, but... Yes. Yeah, this is what we heard also from Mike Wade, the vendor uh, from Wade Garcia, was that the reader devices have been installed on the buses. And the idea is that the children are not only tracked while they're on campus, but they're also tracked on the bus so that the, they know which kids got on the bus, they know when the kids got off the bus, where they got off the bus, so that they can be uh, tracked as well. So if you're a bus driver, you're sitting there, and yes, all of these kids' tags are, are blasting you and bombarding you with radio frequency energy. Is that dangerous? I, to be honest, I, I don't know. Um, I, 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 don't, I haven't done a tremendous amount of research. I have looked at studies that say it does, studies that say it doesn't. There's some compelling stuff out of Europe that says maybe it's a problem. But I will say this, as a parent myself who has had breast cancer, if I had a daughter in this school, I would want the right to obey my own health concerns. Even if those concerns ultimately turned out not to be justified, should I not have the right as a parent to say, as far as I'm concerned, it's not safe enough for you to put this device between my daughter's developing breasts. And when they take that right away from parents, regardless of what the science says or doesn't say, they're really fundamentally violating your right as a parent to make health and safety decisions for your child. So if they, yeah, what, what I would like to see, and when I was at the, um, at the EPIC event, one of the things that, you know, we went back over our position statement, which I would recommend everybody read. We've got it down to six pages now. But our position paper says, switch this around. If you really want to do it, if you absolutely need to have this, make it an opt-in program. So that if you're a parent and you want your child to be tracked in this way, that you sign a document, you sign up, just like a field trip. You know, they have to get parents' permission to let the kids go on a field trip because it could be unsafe. They have to get parents' permission to, to, to talk about the birds and the bees. So why should they not have to get parents' written permission to put a tracking device around their necks? Amen. So, and then if parents want it, great. And if you don't sign it, then you don't participate. And this is a really fundamental, basic privacy. All the privacy advocates will give you the argument between opt-in and opt-out. 
So when you log on to a website, and just by using the website, it says we automatically will track everything you do and send you tons of spam unless you find the box and check it to turn it off. That's called opt-out, and that's what's not even available here. Even like the most egregious website tracking garbage gives you the opportunity to opt-out. I don't want to have to be the one to interrupt Dr. Catherine Albrecht, but the questions are stacking up. That's right. good. So, okay. Um, again, uh, the question for the panel real quickly, will this problem affect bus drivers? I'm a Northside bus driver. Will it affect uh, us, bus drivers, when students board the big yellow bus and uh, they have it around their neck? Yes, and I would, the answer is absolutely yes. And I would ask the bus driver to consider the student's behavior before and after this stuff's being implemented. And I'll tell you why the bus is, in, is important. The signals, RF signals, any kind of radiation signal is affected by constructive interference and destructive interference. Constructive interference is when waves add to each other and that's what you're gonna get on the bus. It's a, it's a metal, encasing, those signals are going to bounce back and forth and you're going to have hot spots mm. in that bus. The bus is going to be one of the worst places for this. Inside the school you have concrete walls, the signals can leave, leave the area, but within those metal confines the bus is going to be a disaster. So the answer is yes. Wow. Wow. Not really. Andrea, have you ever ridden a school bus? A yes. north side bus? Okay, go ahead. Um, on my bus from John Jay, there was already the reader for the RFID chip installed on the bus. Now they're real skinny, they're little black, and they're posted right above the window where the bus driver sits. It was actually my bus driver who told me, he goes, hey, um, I, cause I saw it and I was like, sir, what's that for? He goes, oh, that's for that home project, you know? And I was like, no, what are you talking about? He goes, you know, your badges, your badges. And I was like, so that tracks me. And he goes, yeah. And I was like, well, that's not what the school district said. So he was the reason I actually found out that they do track you on the bus. And I previously shared a bus with another campus. I shared with Warren and their magnet school. They don't have the RFID tags. So my RFID tag or other students' RFID tags, you know, is not only affecting my bus driver, but students from other campuses who shared the bus with me. So it, it does affect you as a bus driver and other students from other campuses if you share a bus. Thank you, Andrea. And this is a good time. I'm glad everyone's still still here. I know I know we're kind of going long here, but we've got some really good questions. And uh, with you in just a moment, let me first introduce um, Matt. Will you tell us Matt Simpson from the Texas ACLU? Give him a hand for showing up. Ah, what a concept! Show up, huh? <laughs> uh, Matt Simpson, tell us about you. Um, sure. I uh, do. Um, my main focus is doing state legislative work for the ACLU. So I spend quite a bit of my time up in Austin at the Capitol, basically fighting far rights, right? And um, and so I wanted to quickly. And I apologize for being late. I was actually uh, at a hearing on something else, and it ran a little bit late. So it took me a while to get here. But um, it's really great to see everyone here. And I'm I'm really impressed with the out turnout. I wanted to talk really quickly about the history within Texas of the attempts to regulate the use of RFID, because I think it's sort of interesting and telling, and it kind of parallels some of the things I, I imagine that have already been set up here and some of the things you all already know as people interested in this technology. The first bill that I know of in Texas was in 2005, and it was uh, Representative Cole Korst, who will be coming up frequently in this discussion, uh, filed a bill that would have barred the use of radio frequency identification in students' badges. Um, and it was pretty clear, pretty, pretty clear ban. Um, and it, uh, you know, didn't really make it out of committee. It didn't go very far. Um, but interestingly, by 2007, uh, the technology had kind of, it, well, the, interestingly, Cole Course was ahead of the, of the curve, right? In 2005, I don't think a lot of people had even thought to put these badges in kids, put these, this uh, technology in kids' badges, uh, school badges. So by 2007, the world is kind of caught up. And uh, Jerry Madden, who's uh, later kind of considered a major reformer in the criminal justice system, proposed this bill that made it all the way to the governor's desk and then was vetoed to track everybody in the state prison system with RFID, which this would probably be a very different meeting if that were the case. I mean, can you imagine the kind of jump start this technology would have had if that bill hadn't been vetoed by Governor Perry, who we as the ACLU constantly disagree with, but in this case, we were really excited. I mean, I think it's obviously the right choice in our opinion. Uh, so then, and, and then another, another use, so Cole Course refiled her bill in 2007, 
you have this kind of crazy plan to put everybody on TDCJ on, you know, on some kind of electronic surveillance, and then the deer breeder bills start, right? And so if you, at this point, they're starting to open the door for tracking animals with RFID. Um, and to be quite frank, a, a, a much more appropriate use, right? Um, and so in 2007, Cold Course Bill also doesn't get too far. Um, in 2009, uh, the bill's filed again, um, and uh, RFID makes an appearance in border crossing documents. Uh, so that you could get, at that time, what was called an enhanced, many of you will know about this. In fact, I'm pretty sure Heather and I met Tom when this was a, a hot item at the ledge. The, um, the, they, they were creating what were called enhanced driver's licenses. They had RFID in them, and the idea was that you could go through the border and uh, the radio frequency ID would identify you and you wouldn't have to stop. Now, I mean, this makes about as much sense security-wise as the idea of giving somebody a badge they can throw on top of the school, right? Like, this is an equally crazy plan. Um, but anyway, so, so RFID has now been used in a couple different ways, right? And in 2009, um, you know, really <laughs> what happened was ACLU testified in support. The technology folks uh, testified against the bill to, to, I think in this one was creating opt-in by parents. Um, and it didn't go anywhere again. Um, and so now, you know, now we go to 2011, um, sort of a similar outcome. Um, you know, kind of the bill didn't move much. We saw a couple of breeder bills. Thankfully, the driver's license thing had fallen away. Madden retired, so we're not, we're not worried about that. Um, and, and so it sort of set us up for this session. And it's been really interesting. And, and this is um, not always true for RFID as a kind of a social issue or as, an, as something that we need to work on as a society. Uh, often our legislatures are not the place to go. Uh, many times moneyed interests, quite honestly, have enough power to kind of slow things down. This session has been sort of an aberration. Um, it, Cole Corst has been joined by another representative, Representative Burkett, um, who's a kind of well-established Republican. And in the House, uh, Senator Estes has filed a version of this bill as well. And these are all bills, there's, the House has both versions, right? The House has a version that would regulate RFID use and allow parents to opt out, and a version that would ban it. Um, in, the, in the Senate, uh, Senator Estes filed simply a ban, and it's uh, SB 173, I encourage you all to call his office and thank him. Um, and the thing that's pretty interesting is I think that this bill will go through his committee. So as chair of the committee, he has kind of a lot of power. So for the first time in the history of RFID, a good bill seems to be poised to do well both in the Senate and the House. And um, yeah, it's fantastic news. So if, if I don't get across any other point today, uh, I would definitely encourage you all to contact both your House rep and your senator and let them know that these bans on use of RFID are a priority to you and you care as a constituent. Um, and I think, you know, uh, I think that this is, like I said, just we've kind of hit an interesting point where the technology is now common enough that legislators know what we're talking about. And uh, quite honestly, I mean, what's happened here in Northside is raised the, raised the, the, the you know, concerns. And the real concern is legislators don't want to legislate between parents and their children, you know? And, and the way that the things have played out where it's very difficult for parents to have, um, to have, well, in the school kind of interjecting itself there, right? And so the way that they're allowing schools to put the RFID technology in place without parents really having a say in the larger program or in what happens with their particular student um, is really rubbing legislators the wrong way. So at any rate, I, I think some good news from the Capitol, maybe for once. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Matt. And uh, I just want to, again, I, I'm coming back to commentator and not moderator. What, you know, midway, who, are they going to fire me midway through? Let me tell you, we've, got a, we've got right here a holy Bible, then we've got a doctor, then we've got the ACLU, then we've got a Harvard grad, then we've got a, a really cool chick from Austin. I think you see something, you know? I really do. I really do think that uh, something's going on here. So just, just saying. All right, ma'am, you right there. You've been waiting so patiently. Talk to us. Uh, my name is Mrs. Hernandez. I'm Mrs. from Hernandez, Adrian, can you Michigan. Speak right up to the mic. Sure. Right up to the mic. Your mouth right up to it. Okay. My name is Mrs. Hernandez. I'm Andreas Grima. I'm from Adrian, Michigan. I came all the way from Adrian, Michigan. I just have two questions. Um, Mrs. Sauber, right? I can't pronounce it. Uh, 
you said that the school district had put all the information on their website. It, they could go 